Hi class, welcome to the next video for uh, lecture 19, Tuesday, March 31st, uh, but please watch this before Thursday, April 2nd, since we'll be doing some problems related uh, to this chapter. So we're still on chapter 7, this is the second video uh, on water quantity and quality. Uh, we'll be on section 7.2, uh, surface water, groundwater, and watersheds. So the objectives related to this chapter are to understand the major components of groundwater systems and to delineate a watershed and estimate runoff. So we'll probably just cover half of um, the second objective and do uh, estimating runoff in the synchronous uh, lecture. So what is an aquifer? Uh, hopefully you know this from the reading. Uh, try to kind of identify where the aquifer is in this picture. Uh, a lot of times we think of aquifers as like rivers underneath the ground or lakes uh, or just, you know, pockets of water. But really groundwater fills the spaces between soil particles and fractured rock beneath the earth's surface. Um, so an aquifer describes an underground soil or rock through which groundwater travels. And here's just a picture of aquifers and wells, domestic wells. Uh, at households, sometimes houses have individual wells in the Central Valley. We have large municipal wells that pump out water and then distribute it among houses. Uh, and so this is how they, you know, sink the well into the ground and extract uh, the groundwater. Even though the groundwater is not in rivers, it still can have a flow uh, into the pump. Uh, and uh, there's the unsaturated and saturated zone, uh, so this varies uh, depending on the season. If there's a lot of rain, it can fill in um, the in the soil particles and uh, higher have a higher groundwater table, uh, and it can vary depending how much you pump. So then you saw a cone of the depression on the right side of the house. Uh, so this can happen when you're uh, pumping groundwater, and especially if you over pump, it can cause problems uh, for your neighbors or cause the groundwater to flow inwards and then not flow in wetlands or other natural systems. Another important uh, terminology for aquifers between, besides saturated and unsaturated is confined and unconfined. So I'll give you a little bit to read over these definitions in Table 7.1. Okay, so if you need more time, feel free to pause this video. Uh, so here is depictions of confined and unconfined aquifers, so try to identify which is confined and unconfined between A and B. Okay, so hopefully you got that correct, an unconfined aquifer is A, uh, and confined is B, uh, the one between the layers or confining unit. So this can cause, as it says in the definition, a flowing artesian well. I saw a lot of these in uh, Tunisia, and they were actually geothermal, um, and like kind of hot springs that they had to have cooling towers to distribute the water to their date plantations. Uh, so these aren't, these are sometimes uh, more fossil or older aquifers uh, infiltrated through uh, the mountains, uh, so they're not infiltrating through directly through the sto soil like unconfined aquifers. Uh, so they could have been formed over, you know, thousands or even millions of years uh, and can be pretty old water. And so you have to be careful when extracting it because it's not being uh, replaced at a very high rate or any rate at all. So a question I often get um, when I give this lecture is how do hydrologists locate groundwater? We don't get too much into this, uh, but there is a link here if you want to read more about it. Uh, really, it's not like fancy technology. Uh, it's a lot of, you know, looking at the soil characteristics and the elevation to where uh, groundwater can be and existing wells, or they can drill a test well to see if there's water nearby. So that covers uh, major components of a groundwater system. The first objective 
Uh, second objective is to delineate a watershed. So uh, hopefully you can think of what a watershed is. So a watershed is the land area that drains to a point of concern. Uh, so all lakes and rivers have watersheds. Uh, as you can see from this picture, it's usually determined by elevation where water flows uh, to a single point due to gravity. And humans can create watersheds when they make man-made lakes or uh, dam up rivers. So I'll show a little video here. <laughs> What is a watershed? Is it a shed that holds water? Nah, try again. A watershed is all of the land that drains into the same location or body of water. People tend to think only of water bodies, such as rivers, lakes and wetlands, as being part of their watershed. However, any land, whether it is park, farm, forest, school parking lot, and even the soil we build our homes on is also included. Think of a watershed as a funnel, collecting all the water within a specific area and draining into the nearest body of water. Drop by drop, water is channeled into soil, groundwater, creeks and streams, making its way to larger rivers and eventually the ocean. Everyone in the world lives in a watershed. Watersheds know no political borders, whether local, national or international. Our environment, our economy and our society all depend on a healthy watershed. Okay, so hopefully that video was useful. Always helps to have an Australian accent to narrate things. Sorry, you have to listen to me. Uh, so yeah, thinking of a watershed as a funnel, uh, a watershed is a very important concept uh, to learn uh, and be aware of. As the video said, watersheds know no political boundaries, no state, county, or international boundaries. So a lot of times watersheds cross different countries, different states, different counties, uh, but what you do and the policies in that state or county or country can determine, uh, you know, the health of the watershed and so if a watershed's overdeveloped that can have negative implications for water quality as we'll see uh, later. So I just wanted to give you some context to California and to Merced. Uh, so how many watersheds do you think there are in California? Like a rough number? Uh, well, it depends how you draw watersheds, but this uh, report says 190, so there's a ton of different watersheds, and as I said, watersheds can be for an individual creek or lake, uh, and then you can also draw, like, lar there's sub-watersheds within, like, larger watersheds, and that's usually how we divide boundaries. So we have irrigation districts, so this is Merced. This is Merced Irrigation District, uh, so the whole watershed is pretty large going from Yosemite National Park for where Mer Merced River all the way down into the city. And uh, yeah, so this is MID or Merced Irrigation District's watershed, and then as you can see, the sub-watersheds for Bear Creek, uh, Castle Dam, Mariposa Creek, uh, Lake Yosemite, uh, Know, right next to campus. Uh, so there's, you know, sub-basins or sub-watersheds within maybe a larger watershed. Okay, so that's um, enough for this video. So hopefully you've been able to understand groundwater systems and uh, how watersheds are delineated. Uh, and then we'll use this, uh, these concepts in uh, calculating runoff and how development in, impacts runoff in the next version. So thank you. Let me know, of course, if you have any questions. Bye.